Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today we're going to be talking about this. This is a package that comes from Germany, specifically from a company called Game Fairy. Uh, what this is, just get it out of the way, this is a brand new Sega Dreamcast game, represented here by the Pink Sakura Edition Dreamcast that has seen better days, this is a little bit yellow, but whatever, it was a good deal. Um, anyway, yes, we have a brand new Dreamcast game. Let me go ahead and open it up and we'll talk more about it. Now, for those of you sitting out there being like, new Dreamcast game, what are you talking about? Yes, believe it or not, that is still a thing. There are actually new Dreamcast games that come out every once in a while. The thing is, they're not by Sega or other major developers and publishers. Typically, it's usually indie developers and publishers that have motivation of all their own. I've covered these things for years and I find them kind of fascinating, but uh, every single one of them has a slightly different story and uh, this is basically the story with this one. So we have some paperwork there, which is looks like it's probably just a receipt. Yeah, in this case I actually bought this one because I was like, wow, this is a little bit of a shocker. So here we go. This is the game. This is the Textorcist, text the story of Ray Bibia, and we'll open that up in just a little bit. Um, now, the deal with this game is that this is a game that came out on Steam and other platforms a couple of years ago, and it is actually a keyboard intensive game, hence you're seeing this, we'll get into that in a second. Um, but what's really surprising about this is that it got a Dreamcast edition out of nowhere, and physically no less. Uh, this was actually published by a company called Head Up. Now, that's really shocking to me, and probably to people who are in Germany and Austria as well. Now, I'm obviously not, I'm an American, but I've been to those countries a few different times, and when I go into some stores over there, I'll notice and I'll look at their PS4 section, their Switch section or whatever, and there'll be always these indie drink or indie like games that have come out, and I've never seen them physically on those platforms, the Switch or the PS4 or Xbox One or whatever, and they're always published by Head Up. They're like a major publisher over there. So to find out that they were releasing a Dreamcast game was just kind of like, huh, okay. So when I found out about this, I was like, I have to support this. I just have to. And this was really one of those releases that just kind of came and went very quickly. I believe it was announced in like February of this year. And then they were like on March 4th, it goes up for sale. And now it's June and here it is. It was a relatively quick release, which is not usually the case with Dreamcast Indie stuff. It's also the second Dreamcast game of this year, the previous one being Xenocrisis, which technically came out right at the beginning of the year. But uh, in short, yeah, that is our brand new Dreamcast game, and it's very cool to see one made by someone that is completely fresh to the scene, because they've never made a Dreamcast game before, neither the developer or the publisher, and they just randomly decided to do it. Most of the time it's done by Josh Prod these days, or a couple others where they made a game for a different platform and brought it over here, which seems to be the case, but in this instance, it's particularly unique because, again, Head Up is a relatively big deal, at least in a couple of countries, and they have no history with the Dreamcast whatsoever. And for them to make their game, but make it into, you know, physically on only one platform and for it to be the Dreamcast, bizarre. But that said, let's go ahead and open it up. Um, so it comes in this, like, red type of case here, which is very reminiscent to me of the Biohazard... Uh, you know, uh, Code Veronica edition for the Dreamcast. So Resident Evil Code Veronica, when it came out on the Dreamcast in Japan, had a red case very similar to this. Um, that could just be a coincidence, or they liked that design choice and they went with it, but there you go. Uh, and then the case itself, obviously based on the Japanese artwork, I have number 267 out of 666. Very, uh, to use a British term, very cheeky using that particular number. Um, I, I'll never do that again, I apologize. But yeah, that, that's how many of these they made, and so I was like, I have to get that. I can't imagine, you know, they're ever going to do another print run of this. Um, but yeah, the... the the Texter says, the story of Ray Bibia. So it comes in a two, uh, you know, one of those thick cases that has two discs. Um, one is the game itself, which I believe is this disc. Um, and then the other one is the bonus music CD. Yeah, so the first one, sorry, the first one here is the, the game itself, which looks very good. Uh, and for, you know, for the record's sake, these are done on CD-ROMs. They're printed in factories. This is not, you know, a CDR with a guy writing his game's name on a Sharpie or anything like, with a Sharpie or anything like that. This is actually real. Uh, has an instruction booklet. I believe they said it was like 24 pages, although I think in order to reach 24 pages, you would have to include the outside part in that because the number it, it only numerically counts 21 but it doesn't really matter um but yeah it's in english um interesting yeah the entire thing's in english despite coming from germany it does not appear to actually contain any german 
Um, and then the other side is just the bonus music CD, which again has head up on it. I, I'm really honestly genuinely shocked to see their logo on a modern Dreamcast game. Again, if you don't live in Germany or Austria or you haven't been there and looked in stores, that probably won't mean anything to you. But it, it it's a little weird. It's it's just like seeing this is not quite this extreme, but it's almost like seeing an Activision logo on there. It's just kind of a head scratcher. You're like, really? That's okay. You're a little bit bigger than this, <laughs> but appreciate your support nonetheless. But yeah, that that is the entire package there. It looks very good. So the game itself is also very unique because in addition to everything else we've already covered with it, as the keyboard implies, as I mentioned there before, and the name, this is actually the first Dreamcast game in like, I don't know, 18 years to use the Dreamcast keyboard in any meaningful way. Um, now this here is the Divers 2000 Dreamcast keyboard, the Japanese smaller keyboard. I have the full size ones, but Again, for the sake of the pretties, I decided to bring out this particular unique version. But yeah, the Dreamcast had keyboards. It was actually a big deal when the console came out. I know this is going to sound laughable, but part of the argument at the time, you have to remember, 98, 99, obviously people had PCs, but it wasn't a thing where like everyone had one. And there was some, there was a point in there, I actually remember this as a kid, there was a point in there where you could debate, do I need a computer or do I need a Dreamcast? The Dreamcast has a keyboard, it can go online, do I need a computer? It was a different era, it really was. Obviously, hilariously, that did not work out, but as a result, there are a lot of keyboards out there for the Dreamcast, and various games took advantage of them in more ways than others. And I think one of the most famous examples would be Typing of the Dead, where it was just a full conversion of House of the Dead 2, but using the keyboards. Instead of shooting at stuff with a light gun, you would type out a random word and it would hit your target. This is supposed to be very similar. Now, obviously, I haven't played it yet because we just got it, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. So. You can play it with a keyboard, that's how it's actually recommended, but the guy, these guys are not stupid. They recognize that not everyone's going to have a Dreamcast keyboard. So it is actually regular controller compatible, it just plays very differently. Rather than a word being prompted and you typing it out, it presents you with different options and you use the L and R triggers to like select which letter you want. And that the gameplay then fundamentally becomes different. So what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and play it a bit, show it to you guys with the keyboard as intended, and then I'll show you the same basic gameplay but with a regular controller just so you can see it both ways. So now we're back into the gameplay here. Uh, so yeah, this again, I'm playing with the keyboard. You know, it's pretty obvious because it says things like press space to skip. And like I said, I will show you footage of what it's like to play with an actual controller. Uh, but having played this for a bit, here's, here's my first thoughts. This game was definitely intended to be played with a keyboard. Um, but I found that that was actually a lot more challenging. Now that again, I, I'm purely a console gamer. I really don't come from any sort of background of playing on keyboards, so logically someone who plays with a keyboard for most of their games would probably be a lot better at this. I was having a much easier time actually playing it with the controller. Um, as you'll see in a bit here as we go further into the gameplay footage. But basically you have to navigate with the uh, the keypad, right? You know, the up, down, left, right, while also typing the words, which seems like it would be a lot easier than it is. But I was also using that tiny Divers 2000 Dreamcast keyboard, which is probably a mistake because my hands aren't naturally fitted for that. So you're going to see me screw up a lot. I swear I'm a much better typist. If you come into my Discord, you'll notice that all the time. I type very quickly. Um, but uh, the gameplay itself, I, it was actually surprisingly fun. And it was one of these, the few times where I've ever seen a game that was so text intensive, uh, no pun intended on that, where the characters are constantly talking and you're reading, where I was actually paying attention because the dialogue was pretty amusing and pretty funny. Um, but, uh, you know, beyond that... Uh, what else can I tell you? I've got it running uh, right now through uh, the DC Digital or DC HDMI. Uh, so we got a full HDMI capture. It looks really good. Very clean picture. Um, and surprisingly, like, funny interactions. Uh, however, I cut out things like load screens just because this game is, is pretty load intensive. Like, every time you go from one area to the next, it's got to load. And the load times, even on something like a mode or a GDMU, can take a moment, and so off of a disc, it's even worse. So that would be like my biggest criticism of this from a functionality standpoint is just the amount of load times you have to get into. I skipped out a whole bunch of stuff right there. Basically, he goes into his office and he gets a call and says like, hey, we need you to come perform an exorcism. He's like, all right. He's like reluctant. It's like he's an accidental, like awesome badass where he has to like go and do this against his will all the time. It's actually a pretty funny plot line. Um, but yeah, gameplay was pretty solid. I, I find it pretty amusing. 
And, you know, I would say if you have a Dreamcast uh, and you're at all interested in the concept, I would say do it. Um, but again, I will remind you that you can play it with a standard controller, and I'll show you a small snippet of how that works. But again, I was more efficient with that than I was without it. On top of that, the game, of course, is region free. I know it came from Europe and it's got a Japanese design, but that's all, that's nothing. It's just purely cosmetic. It doesn't have any real uh, bearing on anything. All the re all these games are region free. So if you're in the US and you're like, hey man, I wanna buy that, but I'm worried about it playing on my US console, not a problem, it's, it's gonna work. Unless you have one of those really, really late Model 2 Dreamcasts, but I'll bet you you don't. Those are extremely uncommon. Like I'm the Dreamcast dude, and I've only seen one of those once oh. ever. Like, they're just not common, so I, I really wouldn't worry about that. That's typically the case with these games, is that you're going to be totally fine playing it. Uh, the other thing is, I listened to the music CD for a while. Music's pretty good. I'll, I'll give you, you know, I'll leave you alone here in a second. You can just kind of listen to the some of the music in the game, but, you know, I've already ripped the, the music, and I can play it on, um, you know, on mobile devices and so on and so forth, in addition to being able to use the original disc. But very, very cool. Another thing to note is, if you don't want to get the more expensive deluxe, edition that only has 666 copies they actually did a standard edition uh, that just looks like this so you can check that out that one's a little bit cheaper too so either way you've got options I'm just gonna leave you alone for a little bit and watch like this big kind of boss battle I did here uh, again this is with the keyboard but again the tinier keyboard if I had properly mounted like on a desk somewhere with a full-size keyboard I think I probably would have done a lot better but just kind of sitting there in my on my sofa with a tiny keyboard on an abnormally small you know like the way it's placed and everything I wasn't doing as great as I think I would have uh, but then again, I, like I said, I come from a background of playing things with a controller instead of a keyboard. So either way, definitely cool to check out, and I'll catch up with you guys at the end. And I'm back. So you can see the mechanic of it is pretty different, where it just kind of throws a word at you and you have to press left or right. That's actually a lot harder than it seems. And the same is true of the actual keyboards, because, you know, you're under a lot of pressure to type the thing correctly. So if you've ever played something like Typing of the Dead, you, you know what I mean. It, it's, it's, it seems like the easiest thing. Like, I just type the word yourself and I win. It should be easy, but it's oddly not. <laughs> um, but yeah, regardless, I like I said, I think this is pretty cool. I will put a link in the description to Game Fairy if you want to check this out. As I said, there are were only 666 copies of this ever produced. Um, I don't know how many of them were sold, at least 267 or whatever my number was. Uh, hopefully there's some still available if you want to check it out, by all means you can do that. I think it's a cool thing to support. And you know, who knows, maybe we'll get more games from these guys at some point. I mean, if HeadUp is willing to publish 
games for the Dreamcast, that could be really good because they end up with a lot of indie stuff. So yeah, we might we might see a lot more from them. Hopefully, if it gets supported enough. But uh, yeah, anyway, that'll do it for me. If you guys could like, comment, subscribe, follow me on all the social media stuff, the Discord, the Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. It's in the description. Appreciate you as always. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.